Oh man, episode 60, so yes. how long have you been doing this? Uh, dude, this is, today is the one year anniversary. Woo, dude. where's the champagne? I wish I had some, dude. I, dude, I, I, I almost on... sent you a message and was like, do I need to bring any, like... You could have brought, I mean, that's why I tell you people... Want, you like... want me to... Well, I also started working at Mad Tree, so okay. oh, I get... Totally I can, stuff. man... I could have hooked you up. You could have totally brought something. I wouldn't, but, I wouldn't have said that for sure. I'm going to do like a countdown to my little yeah, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we'll, we'll run it. Yeah. All right. One last chance. So we'll check the camera. <laughs> yeah. I've never actually done a real podcast. So, oh, nice. uh, I'll be here first. I'm popping that chair. Right? So if, uh, if, if it's a total bomb, I won't be upset if you work. if you release somebody else as you're like one year. <laughs> Dude, I have my friends on here and we just talk about nonsense. So we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be, we'll be just fine. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do it. Do it. And three, two. You talking to me, I'm talking to you. And this is talking to me, talking to you. And I am joined by the... Coy Comer. I don't know if it needs to be that special. Oh no, it's special. I, I make everybody <laughs> special here, man. This is this is, you know, you're, you're here to be special. <laughs> if you say so, you know. But anyway, man, thank you for coming. Yeah, so much, no, dude. man. Yeah. I uh, I've only been in Mount Orb probably uh, a handful of times. Less than a handful. <laughs> right, like, uh, yeah. I used to help out at a church that was out here that okay. uh, I just have the new connections. I don't even remember the church. Oh, okay. uh, I'm a nice. terrible person. And, you know where uh, it's at? Uh, it's, all I remember is we would pass uh, Grandma's Pizza, right? Is it Grandma's or Grandma's? Because there's, there's, there's both. Two. Yeah, there's two. So but it's the one that's I like better. I always forget this. Ah, so I think, I think Grandma's. Yeah. Is the good one. Yeah, so whichever one, one that is. That's like, in that's... Batavia and Amelia, I think. Okay. So Grandma's it might, is It might be here, Grandma's. Which is in the center of town, and then there's one in Williamsburg, I yeah, think. Yeah, it's like center. It's a it's a Christian church. I've always had a problem with... It's like with... a non-denom Christian church. Okay. Is it like is it like a Main Street church? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Is, it, is it big? Like, pretty big? It's decently big, I, think, I would I say so. I think I know what you're talking about, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, yeah, <laughs> I've only, like, played, like, so my old band played there uh, for, um, uh, like, a, just, like, a, a concert night, uh, okay. essentially. So it was uh, the comedian Tony Wolf, if you've ever heard of him. I feel like I've heard the name before. Yeah, so he's, but... like, a Christian comedian. Okay. And we, we... Uh, we were supposed to play worship, but the extra incentive to us coming out from Cincinnati to play worship was that we'd get to play our music. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, we're like an indie rock piano band. And, okay, uh, very cool. Well, yeah, yeah. It was great because uh, we, we started like the first note and we just watched all these old ladies get up and like rush out. Oh, that's the worst. It was the funniest <laughs> thing, though. It was, like, like the only show that we ever played where, like, all the lights were on and, like, you could see everything clear as Pr- day. Pressure was on. It was the weirdest thing, like, and legitimately you just see these old ladies, like, kind of shuffle <laughs> out as quick as they and can. Leave. And, like, other people were enjoying it, but it you was, like, the weirdest thing. You sung your heart out there, right? Huh? You sung your heart out there, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, we did. We did what <laughs> we did, the and then it was great, because uh, that was, like, the first, like, time I ever had, like, an accident. Uh, somebody, like, backed into my car oh, okay. while they were leaving. I was young and dumb and didn't know that you are supposed to call the cops and so that you could use your insurance so it was like we were just like we have to get home that was all we cared about so like we did stuff like that and then um yeah that's really the only uh, church like helping out at like that church and knowing like uh the associate pastor which i don't know if he's still the associate pastor i know he's still within the church there but i don't know yeah 
Well, but that's the only reasons I've ever been to Mount Orb. That's a hell of a story. That's a good, <laughs> that's a it's a it's a good time and a bad time. And I feel that right. man. I've lived here like basically half of my life. I I went to high school here. I yeah. went to I went to middle school in Hammersville. I moved around a lot during those period. Yeah. Like in, in between, I went to elementary school in Mount Orb. But I always ended up coming yeah. back here for some weird reason. Yeah. You know, I don't know what it is. But uh, <laughs> I've also ate at the skyline like right off the exit. Oh yeah, numerous. It's times. good. It's a good skyline. I mean, is there a bad skyline? I mean, I mean there yeah, probably there's is. There's definitely yeah. a bad skyline. <laughs> We've had this discussion in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> What's I mean, the worst skyline? Dude, a buddy of mine told me. I'm pretty sure the story was on this podcast. But he told me he's like, man, I pulled up to. Uh, a gold star is gold star. Oh, gold star! Gold yeah, yeah, star yeah, yeah. is the yeah. But he told me apparently like, their burgers are great though. I could, I could, I could. I've probably, never had one. I could probably see that for sure. But, but they started <laughs> as a burger joint, apparently. <laughs> really? They yeah. started as a burger joint. Yeah. And then they transferred over to the yeah the, the Cincinnati Chili. I franchise. think because like I don't know it. I don't know like the whole history, but I know at least that. And I don't know when Skyline, like, blew up, and I don't know how mom-and-pop Skyline originally was, but you know, like, every little city center in Cincinnati has their own, like, chili place. Like, there's uh, Pleasant Ridge Chili in Pleasant Ridge, there's... Uh, there's, like, Camp Washington. Camp Washington! There's, uh, uh... That's my favorite I, right there. I went to Cincinnati Christian University, so there's a, there is one over on Glenway Avenue that I can't remember the name of. Uh, there's Chili Time in, like, St. Bernard. Okay. So, like, there's a bunch of, like, small, like, that, that was, like, the one and only, or, like, they might have had one or two other spots, but, like, yeah. it was a lot of mom and pop, like, and you went there because their chili was the best in town. Yeah. So I don't know when Skyline and Gold Star kind of took the reins. Took the reins and like I was gonna say, the story is that my buddy went to the drive-through and their their speaker was broken. So they got a guy out there. He's just smoking a cig. Going, hey man, what you want? Hey, (laughs) what can I get you? Hey man, what you want? Let me hit this new point. (laughs) Dude, it's so funny. Wouldn't it just be easier to just like have a sign that says like pull up to the window? You would think, but no, dude, not a gold not, star. Not, not a gold star. <laughs> it's it's also funny, too, because, like, I grew up uh, in a small town similar to, like, Mount Orb, I presume, like, uh, Russell County, Kentucky. So, like, we refer to ourselves by the county, but it's Russell Springs and Jamestown, so it's, like, a three-hour drive from Cincinnati. Okay. Uh, no skyline near. Um, like, the last skyline is in, like, Dry Ridge. Okay. My whole family knows this because, like, <laughs> it's the last, like, sp- time you can get it. And, like, the next town over, there's a Gold Star. Okay. And so, like, when I lived there, we would get Gold Star just to have something of that realm. Of, but, like, yeah. you don't eat it all the time. You're just like, man, I'm really hankering some Cincinnati-style chili. You get, I get in that mood, man. It's just something about us. And... Gold Star is the closest thing you have, so you just do it. Hey, man, I'm not dissing on Gold Star. I still eat the <laughs> shit out of the Gold Star. But I, like, don't I've eat some it regularly. Funny, I got some funny stories, though. Yeah. One of my own personal stories is that like, I can't, I went to the drive-thru, and there was this couple standing in the drive-thru. They were standing there holding hands, doing PDA and shit. It was yeah. so funny. And they got up to the speaker and ordered. I'm like, how did that even like register? Like, how, like did you <laughs> use my car to register your order? Because I'm pretty sure they have like a pressure, yeah, 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 pressure yeah, thing yeah. that like registers a car that goes. Ba-dum. I don't know. I always thought there was like a camera. I I, I would yeah. But, like at most drive throughs like I feel like there's a camera and they like kind of see when a car's there. And they're like, oh, shit, let me take your order. When I worked at White Castles, it was a big old bell. You would just hear a bell. Oh, yeah. Th- yeah, yeah. And then, like... Like one of those... Uh, those. Um, I can't remember if it was in the headphones yeah. or if it was in the intercom in the back, but but I do remember hearing, like, a, like a ding-ding. Yeah. Like, almost like a The Little open. Caesars has one of those, but it's legitimately just, like, a, uh, like... A, it looks like a piece of rope that's laid out yeah. over the road, and you just drive over it, and it goes ding, and everybody in the world hears it. Uh, like, it's, I mean, it works. I mean, they've been doing it since, uh, I mean, the best uh, 
image I have is like in movies where like the clerk ding, right, and the bell right, and right. they show Just up they pop up nowhere. from the bottom of the they're desk they're like how may we help you exactly yeah they'll, they'll pop up you know except for now it's gold star and like McDonald's and Little Caesars and like yeah yeah things that like and they don't really want to help you anymore no yeah well everything's like, turned into you're a uh, hindrance to me <laughs> everything's turning into the whole like basically like either line serve like right like oh uh, let me get this 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 and my burrito and they make it for, like subway right right or it's like make it your own yeah kinda, like yeah. you just go like buffet style like right. put your hands on everything right. and yeah which is also great right now yeah like everybody should put their hands on everything for sure oh yeah don't use the claws that are there you know, yeah, like I mean, unless there's you know, I mean, there's whatever. also probably something that sat out at that buffet for way too long. <laughs> That's a it, It's terrible because I have it safe is. serve training for like restaurants. So yeah, it's like these are the things that are beat into your head. Oh yeah, <laughs> well, dude, I same. I mean, I used to have a guy that literally would uh, scream corner, walking around. You know. Oh yeah. In the corner. <laughs> yeah, like hey, behind you. Like, corner. Like, I've had every, like, form of, like, hey, I'm by you, I'm next to you, I'm at, carrying something sharp, what have you. Dude, yeah, Just because, no, like, that's the kitchen world, and it's different everywhere you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Man, no, I, oh, that's hilarious. That's fun to know about you. Uh, so, dude, I brought you here because yeah. you're a pretty killer musician, man. I mean, no, Maybe like, it, it's, well, what I think is killer about you is that, like, <laughs> like a very soulful songwriter you know you're kind of like you're really like trying to tell some like like personal to a degree stories you yeah, know like yeah. um uh i was gonna say like the my favorite song of yours is uh kill uh kill, what something it? something kill me, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah something yeah, killing yeah, me yeah. yeah i wrote it down but it's, <laughs> it's a good song dude the reason like why I, like start because i heard you uh crooner circus yeah, the first yeah. time i heard you play and I, I i was like man you know your voice was really unique you know what i mean yeah. I, I i heard it and i was like you know uh what it is what it is kind of just like you know there's like mm-hmm. what nine songwriters a night you know right, right, so you just kind of right. take it as it is but then i seen you play with rachel and sarah yeah and you there was a piano there and you yeah. played that song yeah on piano and i thought i was like Boom! That like that's when it hit me. I'm yeah, like, dude, this was a really, really good song. Yeah, and wrote in very well from I from a that. very you know a decent place. Like, so I just kind of like wanted to get like your inspiration of like uh, your songwriting <laughs> and like where does um, that come from? Different songs uh, come from different places. I'm course, sure yeah, you know course, that. Yeah. Um, specifically, something killing me. It's funny. Um, I I wrote that. Uh, let me back up so i I had a buddy uh him and i uh are like rock climbing buddies uh we used to work together for five years plus years at a coffee shop together okay uh kind of really connected a bond um i and, and then we got into rock climbing but before that um i went through a divorce not to make this all sad all of a sudden, no, but yeah. since since I'm telling stories of how I, I write songs, so, um, yeah, so I went through a divorce, and as I was going through that, he decided to start this thing called Operation Barstool, so at the time, like, nobody knew that we were friends, and we would just go out to a bar and have, like, a couple of drinks, and he'd let me, like, pour out my heart and shoot the shit, and, like, just say all the stuff that I needed to say. Okay. Um, so, uh, just like, which built our friendship up really well. Um, to where him and I have done climbing stuff and whatnot and, uh, hung out a lot. Um, and he recently, uh, went through a very similar situation to me. Um, and, uh, him and his spouse actually owned a house together. And he had a piano that uh, belonged to his family, mm. um, uh, an upright. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that he told me that it's been in his family at least like around the hundred years mark. Okay, that's fucking. So cool. like, the night he told me, uh, you know. I just turned around and did the same favor for him and l- let him pour out all his stuff, which uh, 
I'm sure anybody else that has been on the podcast as a an artist or a musician has said like don't tell your songwriter friends your woes because like <laughs> it'll it'll end up in a song, right? <laughs> it's so, been said before to me for sure. Oh yeah. Right. So like Absolutely. uh that happened and like uh, it just it's this weird like situation of somebody else's heartbreak uh like re-brought up feelings for me so mm-hmm. it's like this this weird way of i could see some of that so okay. i just i had you know i had my phone and i just threw some notes in there i was like cool i i don't know what that'll be or if that'll be anything and i don't even know if it's like the same lyrics that i ended up putting in the song but like i uh i i my buddy was like trying to figure out what to do with all his possessions because he uh he's getting ready to move um elsewhere um and obviously most places aren't conducive to upright pianos that are yeah old and fragile and um and he's like i guess i'm just gonna have to sell it i don't even know if we're going to be able to sell it in time do anything and i was like dude i have the best uh solution why don't you get it delivered to our house we have a spot in our in our two bedroom apartment uh duplex where we could put it i'll keep it i'll maintain it and then when the time is right it is yours i mean it is yours yeah but you just tell me when you're ready to have it back or if you're not or you don't care anymore, or because to me it's important that it's his like family's history, right? For sure. Um, wow. And like, there's a connection with like all of his family. A lot of his family like play piano, and like his mom's a, a piano teacher actually, and already has like two like a like a a baby grand and an upright plus electric keyboard. So like, she didn't have room <laughs> yeah. for it. Or else it probably wouldn't have ended up there. So uh, to make a long story short, um, we get this piano, and I had to work that day, um, and my wife Alyssa was home, so she accepted the piano. Like the the, the, the delivery guys brought it in and put it there, and um, I get home, and within the first fifteen minutes, I sit down, and this song just kind of comes out. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, wow. To me, it's the emotion. Um, it's the situation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Those I've feelings. been there myself. It's a lightning in a bottle situation. Right, like that, yeah. yeah. So it's like, I have moments where uh, it just kind of... So the songwriting for me just happens naturally, and it, it's it's super duper quick. Like, it just pours out of you. Um, and that was one of those moments, and, like, usually my MO for that is, like, I'll open my phone and... Jot some things down. Jot some things down lyrically, and or, like, just open your voice memo and record. Um, so that one started that way, and I, I think the first time I played it, most of this song was there. It was just figuring out a couple things here or there. Um, the bridge came a slightly later like did, I, I remember saying something similar to that did you record the song with that piano yeah i did no well shit. so wow. originally i did that and that was the game plan but it's super duper like out of tune yeah uh and but you we, recorded the demo at least? yeah okay yeah i recorded the demo on it and then i was originally going to do it until i realized that it was going to be too painful yeah um uh, goal is to get it tuned eventually. Um, mm, yeah. So uh, anybody that's within the Cincinnati area, if you're listening to this, watching this, uh, comment your favorite piano tuners. I don't know. <laughs> hey, no, seriously, I'm, I'm uh, on board with that. That's a that's an awesome story, man. Right, like, right, like, you know, very touching way because like you know you guys have built a friendship over all right. these years, and then like. A song comes out of like the touching moments you guys have right. individuals going both going through stuff at different times and then but there's this piano which mm-hmm. you, like you you be like you said you being a musician right everything kind of always comes back to that you right. know and you get to tell this like very inspired moment yeah in that song in that on right. that piano right 
That's that's fucking cool. Yeah, man. so that's very cool. Yeah, like that song, that one's special, and it I think it resonates with a lot of people. And I've been trying to figure out like most of it, and to me, that's the the core of it is that. Um, the other half is uh, uh, I lost my mom to cancer. Uh, it's probably been four or five years now. I, again, as we were talking before the podcast mm-hmm. i'm terrible with dates i'm specifically not going to remember that one right and that's the, the, um so like yeah. the the second verse where uh say these uh these walls don't feel this the same the spirit that once lived here is passed on um like i feel as if i'm trampling on a grave uh that that the, that whole verse um came out of the fact that i was actually made it back home in time before my mom passed um and woke up the next morning to being told that she had passed wow um and uh, uh the guest bedrooms right across from the master and uh there's a long hallway so it's like that imagery to me yeah. um so, and it's the same same premise is again like so you could say that the song's really about my friend not wanting to be in this town anymore because of his heartbreak or you could say i don't want to go back to my hometown because of that heartbreak so it's very much of a dualistic which i know a lot of songwriters they're like i don't ever want to tell anybody what a song's about because they want you to interpret it interpret it for yourself and it's i understand that but it's also like those are pretty monumental moments that, like, it's hard to not know yeah. that that happened in somebody's well, life. And each is their own with the right. songwriting. But like, like, like I said, dude, I, 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 I don't know what it was, but I just had an instinctual feeling. I'm like, this guy's telling some, like, like I said, a soulful right. like part. And like, that's like just in that one song, dude. I mean, there's multiple layers of like yourself on that page, whether you like are telling a story about you or not right. per se, dude. And it, it's fucking. Wow, it's it's compelling, man. It's some it's some deep it. stuff, man. It's like it really comes from your heart. I can tell too. It's like there's some real thought process to these these very beautiful songs, man. It's very cool. And I noticed that <laughs> I noticed that. Uh, so you have those songs, like right. I noticed, like there's like more acoustic style yeah. songs. You you were in a band called uh, Coy Comer and the Wanderers. Yeah, yeah. Um, I listened to some of that stuff too. That was a little more, like you said, like the, that was like the more indie rock, yeah, uh, yeah, Christian stuff, right? Is yeah, that, well, that, that yeah, yeah, there's some Christian influence. Um, so like that's been like my whole world for the most part. So like, uh, I again, I grew up in a small town. Um, it was a dry town too, so there were no bars. Um, so growing up, all our local music scene happened within a church um okay so like that's how i first got into music was like emo screamo like christian bands yeah yeah and that pop punk Prada, bands pierce the bell was huge right around like here, so like all, all those bands but like Local, smaller yeah and like those are the guys that actually influenced me and i actually n- know a bunch of them and they're like big brothers to me now that's right very cool um, and it's really also weird is when I moved up here and started doing like stuff with crooner and whatnot, uh, a lot of the same people that I know, like know all those same people. So it's like this weird, like circle, circle yeah. thing, like everything comes back together, whether you like it or like not. That. And so like, so yeah, so there is some Christian imagery, um, but the, the whole idea and grand scheme with like Koi Comer and the Wanderers was um, before that uh, the the guy who played drums in Koi Comer and the Wanderers also played drums in the band that I was in previously. Okay. Um, which is brilliantly. There's not much out there in the world to find. You can find it on YouTube, um, but we never like actually got it released on streaming platforms. But it was an indie piano rock band. So most of the Koi Comer and the Wanderers stuff, for the most part are, like, essentially the B-sides to that band. Like, okay. anything that I wrote and brought to the table that nobody else was, like... Yeah. It either got moved or it was new material altogether that I wrote. Um, and the whole idea originally was I had played in 
a couple different bands. And I hated the aspect of, well, we can't play a show on ba 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 date because somebody's got a vacation or somebody's got to work or, you know, we can't do this because two members have other obligations already. And it's like, I didn't like being pigeon held to that. Yeah. And when I left one of the bands, uh, I started playing out acoustically a lot more. And then, uh, I had somebody that was trying to like build into me on that and just say like, you need to really like go for that and do your music. And then if it turns into something, it turns into something. And then, the other band kind of got going again. Like, uh, we we had a, a rekindling of that music and, and doing it. And we did a, a bunch of shows for a few years, and then it all disappeared again. And I was like, well, I want to do music. I have this awesome friend that plays drums and also plays guitar. And, I, and I've known tons of other musicians. Um... I want to do a band that is essentially, I'll write the music and I can basically play everything. So like on the EP, I played guitar and bass. Okay. Um, I didn't play drums. My buddy played drums. Yeah. Um, and then obviously vocals. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. I thought that was someone else. Man. She was somebody else. It'd probably sound better. Um, <laughs> But, like, overall, like, the whole idea was, like, I didn't want to do a, a project and just be Koi Comer. Like, yeah. that, that, that to me is weird, um, just because most of the artists that I listen to, right, like, band-wise or whatever, like, don't, they all win under a moniker, like, mm. City in Color or... That's, like, the best one that I can think of off the top of my head. But, like, there's tons of bands that started that way or are are that way. Um, and so, like, I didn't want to just be my name. I wanted to have something with it. So I've always felt as if I have a wandering soul. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah so... I've seen you post something about, like, like the wanderers and what that, like, means to you. Yeah, like so... Uh, I think it's, again, bigger than I am. Like, the whole idea was, like, I never want to be able to turn down a show just because our drummer can't make it or we didn't have a bass player for the night. If we don't have a bass player for the night, my drummer also plays guitar. We just grab two acoustics, or we strip down a drum set and do some cool things that way. Like, yeah. that was always the idea, was either to, like, strip it down and bring it to something super small, or get as many friends involved as possible. Um, okay. So that was always the goal. Yeah. And it, it's always just kind of ended up being me. Yeah, well... I <laughs> well, man, at least you stick in stride. I mean, like, right. and like, I think that image that you have created is totally still a possibility, man. Right. Like, just yeah, you know, I mean, you're you're in the right circles and you're in the you're in the right places, like doing like stuff like crooner. I mean, no is one of his biggest goals, like for himself and for others, is to have people in the area start to collaborate on songwriting right. more and just and not necessarily like oh hey let's be a band but like right, let's right. write a song let's and write a song there let's it is. do that's what it is so yeah so it's an like experience it's a night I, of kind of thing yeah so i'm actually a part of noah's long cut and tr you know trying to get as much out of that as i possibly can but yeah. and then been a part of crooner and it's been cool because uh like the sarah and rachel show like mm -hmm. At the end of the night, we got together and and jammed. Because like, you guys were on the same crooner. Yeah, card. so like yeah. we we just we jammed the night uh, of that one show, and then the the next time that we did it, we did it again, and it's and then one of the last times I played crooner, uh, Amy, Joe, and I ended up getting put on the same Endpoint night, which uh, is uh, which is a funny story because. Uh, like ground floor of covid we met oh nice um so uh, <laughs> we we basically played each other's last show before the world shut down 
which was St. Patrick's Day out in Middletown at Rolling Mills Brewery. They they had a bunch of people come out and play for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Oh, yeah. I remember. Um, and I was out for that weekend. Yeah, so, like, uh, I... So, Amy played, like, shortly before I did. So, I caught, like, the tail end of her set and got to meet her and, and talk. And we really bonded. And then the world shut down. <laughs> and it was this weird thing of, like, oh, like, we, we said, like, we would play together again or try and catch two up. Two like, weeks later. Yeah, which turned into two, two years, years later. later. Uh, it's a and, 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 bit. That's... Oh, man. But, so, we met. <clears throat> And then didn't ever do anything again. And we were always constantly, like, kind of pinging each other back and forth when it came to, like, on Instagram or wherever. Being like, what you're doing is cool. I like what you're doing. When are we going to ever try and do anything again? Are we ever going to see each other again? And I, I kept bugging her about crooner. I was like, there's this thing that's really cool. Like, I've told all my friends and of the friends that I've told about crooner. Amy's like the one that like bought in. Yeah, which I'm glad. Which is great because she's 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 awesome. She's She's great. She's a phenomenal musician. Um, You guys both kind of remind me like the same like style of like inspiration. Yeah, yeah. Come from you know. Yeah. Uh, super crazy. So I was like, hey, no pressure. You can tell me no if you want to, but if we end up on the same round. Would you want to play piano? Because if I'm sitting on a stage, because this also happened shortly after, like Sarah and Rachel and I played at yeah. Stanley's Pub, yeah, I and I played the piano, and I was like, "I this song fe- like has something to it that the piano helps bring out, in my opinion." And when you have somebody that's much more that's before you dropped that song too, wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and when you have somebody that's a a, a, a much better pianist than yourself, uh, get them up wh- there. Why not? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, which was really funny because <clears throat> that night turned into uh, Amy playing piano and Noah like singing some harmonies as well, uh, which wasn't planned or talked about. And then that's what's cool about. And those. then yeah, like that's what makes Crooner super special, and like that things like that happen. Um, and it, it, it was a cool experience. And that was like the first time I felt that song do something in a room. Okay. Um, so that was like a special moment for you. Like just, and and it was also the second time ever Amy, Joe and I got to ever play (laughs) together. That was the whole, it was meant to have the whole point of that conversation was to get to that. But I can rabbit hole forever. Dude, no, I feel you, man. I mean, that's why I'm freaking podcast i guess <laughs> is that why people start podcasts i think so i, I mean why don't i have a million then? that's why that's what i've been told i can least. like start one conversation somewhere else and i'll bring it back i just got, to I just got told else. too many times i talk too much i'm like fuck it i'm gonna, yeah. Tr- I'm gonna how can i like get something out of this right <laughs> absolutely well cool right, dude i want to thank you so much yeah. for coming out, dude it's been it's been fun having you here and yeah talking, getting picking your brain but thank you man no so much. thank you you. It's been great. This spin, talking me talking to you. Thanks for watching. <laughs>